Number three, the murder of Catherine Winter. On the night after Christmas, 2012, 19-year-old Catherine Winter was babysitting her niece and her nephew, who were three and four years old, at her sister's home in Borehamwood, Hertfordshire, England. The next morning, Winter's mother arrived at the home. Her grandchildren ran towards the door, screaming that Winter was dead. Winter's mother went into the kitchen, and she saw something that she will probably never forget. Her 19-year-old daughter was slumped against the fridge. She was lying in a pool of her own blood. The medical examiner determined that the 19-year-old art student had been stabbed 23 times. Several of them were defensive wounds, and 13 were considered significant. The police asked Winter's mother if anyone wanted to hurt her daughter, and she said that she didn't think her daughter had any enemies. They then asked if her daughter had been dating anyone, and she said that she thought she was, but she was secretive about it. The police seized Winter's laptop, and they started to look at her social networking profiles. They noticed that on Facebook, Winter had spent a lot of time talking to a 19-year-old karate instructor named Tony Bushby and Bushby's friends, Dan Tress, Sin Darwin, Shane Poulion, and Crystal Stangard. The police went to Bushby's home, and they found some blood on his front door. They asked him about the blood, and he said that the blood came from a pair of gloves that he was wearing. He said that the gloves were given to him by Dan Tress, which was one of Winter's Facebook friends. He said he didn't realize that there was blood on the gloves when he was wearing them. The police tried to get in contact with Dan Tress, but they were unable to. As the police searched for Dan Tress, they decided to look at Bushby's computer. First, they learned that an hour after the murder, Bushby looked up how to permanently delete a Facebook account. Next, they discovered that Dan Tress, Sin Darwin, Shane Poulion, and Crystal Stangard's Facebook profiles were all created using Bushby's ISP. It turned out that Bushby met Winter at school months before the murder. Their relationship blossomed on Facebook over several months. One reason that Winter developed feelings for Bushby was because how his four friends talked about him. Winter had no idea that the four friends didn't exist. While Bushby talked to her on Facebook, posing as the fictional people, he would watch violent pornography. After they started dating, Bushby asked Winter to keep their relationship a secret. The murder weapon was never found, but the police had plenty of evidence against Bushby, and he was arrested. It's believed that the motive of the murder was sexual. Experts testify that Bushby was most likely sexually aroused from stabbing her. Bushby was convicted, and he was sentenced to a minimum of 25 years in prison. Number 2. The Murder of Brian Barrett In May 2005, a person using the handle, Marine Sniper, entered a chat room for teenagers on the website pogo.com. After chatting for a bit, a user named Tall Hot Blonde sent him a private message. They exchanged several messages in which both chatters said that they were 18 years old. They started to flirt and then they shared personal information with each other. Marine Sniper said that his name was Tommy and he was in the Marines. He lived in Buffalo, New York. Tall Hot Blonde said her name was Jessie and she lived in West Virginia. They also shared pictures with each other. Some of the pictures of Jessie were quite revealing. For nearly a year the relationship continued and it wasn't just confined to online correspondence. They talked on the phone and sent each other gifts, but they never met in real life. Then in May 2006, nearly a year after they first met in the chat room, the relationship hit a major roadblock. It turned out that Marine Sniper wasn't who he said he was. He was really 47-year-old Thomas Montgomery. 
He had served six years in the Marines, but that was decades before. The picture that he sent Jesse was 30 years old. He was also married with two daughters. One of the daughters found an instant message from Jesse and she told her mother. Montgomery's wife found emails, love letters, and gifts from Jesse. So she sent a picture of the family to Jesse along with a note outing Montgomery as a 47 year old father of two. Jesse was mortified upon hearing the news. She asked a co-worker of Montgomery who used the same chat room if the information in the note was true. The co-worker's name was Brian Barrett and he used the name Beefcake. Barrett confirmed that the information was true. Barrett and Jesse then started to develop their own online relationship. They also started to badmouth Montgomery online telling everyone that he was a liar. In private messages, Jesse started to tease Montgomery. Then, for a short time, she went back to be with Montgomery, but didn't stay long. She told him that she would rather be with Barrett. In the fall of 2006, Barrett planned on meeting Jesse in real life, something Montgomery never got to do. Montgomery heard about the planned meeting, and he became enraged. What Montgomery didn't know was that Jesse had text Barrett and she told him that she couldn't meet. On September 15, 2006, Barrett was found shot three times with a marine rifle in the parking lot where he and Montgomery worked. Other co-workers knew about the online love triangle and they told the police about it. The police went to Montgomery's home, but he wasn't there. They thought he might be heading to Jesse's home to kill her, so police were sent to her home. It turned out that Jesse wasn't who she said she was either. She was a 45-year-old housewife named Mary Sheeler. The photographs she used for the tall hot blonde identity were of her daughter. Montgomery was eventually tracked down and arrested. He was convicted and sentenced to 20 years in prison. The police tried to charge Sheila with something, but she didn't break any laws and she wasn't charged with anything. Number 1. The Murders of Billy Payne and Billie Jean Hayworth On the morning of January 31st, 2012, the police of Mountain City, Tennessee were called to the home of 36-year-old Billy Payne and 23-year-old Billie Jean Hayworth. A neighbor walked into the home and found Payne and Hayworth shot one time each in the face. Payne's throat was also slit. Their seven-month-old son was in his dead mother's lap. He was covered in blood, but he was unharmed. It didn't take long before the police had suspects. The couple had been involved in an online feud that got so ugly that reports were made to the police regarding the comments made online. It soon became apparent who committed the murders, but why they were committed shocked the entire community. Seven years before the murders, in May 2005, Marvin and Barbara Potter, along with their adult daughter, Janelle, moved to Mountain City, which has a population of about 2,500 people. Janelle suffered from poor health and her parents were strict and overprotective. Janelle had problems making friends in the new town and she rarely left her parents' house. Four years after moving to the town, a clerk at the pharmacy where Janelle picked up her medication took pity on her and invited her to come hang out with her friends and family. Among her family that Janelle was introduced to was her cousin, Jamie Curd, and her brother, Billy Payne. Kurt and Janelle started dating, but they kept their relationship a secret from everyone else in their lives. Then, in 2011, strange things started happening online. Janelle's mother, father, and boyfriend all started getting messages from Janelle's Facebook account from a man who said his name was Chris and he was a CIA agent. He never used his own Facebook account and he only messaged them through Janelle's account or he sent texts through Janelle's phone. 
Chris would tell Kerr that he had to protect Janelle at all cost. Around the same time that Chris started contacting Kurt and Janelle's parents, Janelle and her parents started getting mean and threatening Facebook messages. The comments in the messages were from anonymous or fake accounts. Janelle soon accused Billy Payne's girlfriend, Billy Jean Hayworth, of being responsible for the harassment. Janelle said that Hayworth was harassing her because Hayworth was jealous of her good looks. Hayworth met Payne after Janelle had met Payne. Hayworth and Payne's romance progressed quickly. It wasn't long before Hayworth was pregnant and they were living together. After Janelle blamed Hayworth for the harassment, the couple unfriended Janelle on Facebook. A short time later, the couple was shot to death. Kurt admitted that he and Janelle's father went to the couple's house at dawn. Marvin shot Hayworth in the face as she held her baby and then he shot Payne and cut his throat while he slept in bed. He killed them because he thought they were threatening Janelle's life and may have acted upon those threats. The police looked at Janelle's computer and found out that there was no CIA agent named Chris. It was Janelle. She had catfished her parents and her boyfriend. Janelle was also the person who was sending and posting the threatening messages that she said Hayworth was responsible for. The police also found posts that Janelle had written on internet forums using different pseudonyms. In these posts, she would bash Hayworth and her friends. The police concluded that Janelle actually loved Payne and she was jealous of Hayworth, so she manipulated her parents and her boyfriend into killing them for her. Kurt, Marvin, Barbara, and Janelle were all arrested. Kurt made a plea deal and he was given 25 years in prison. Marvin, Barbara, and Janelle were all given two consecutive life sentences. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please subscribe for more videos just like it. Please don't forget to visit criminallylisted.com where you can suggest cases and buy merchandise. Please also check out our Patreon page where you can get access to an exclusive podcast. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.